analysis. Now, what we're saying is uh, that will have to occur. Uh, the projects that were named today were to give examples of uh, exactly where we know projects that do stack up, and uh, each and every one of them uh, stacks up. But who makes uh, the final we know decision? For well, the, the final decisions are always made in government budgets, David. Right. But they have to be, in terms of the use of this fund, will be under the control of uh, Infrastructure Australia. And will, so will, infrastructure public transport, will public transport be commercially viable? Because quite often it's not, and state governments largely have well, to they, do it for social reasons, but it doesn't return commercially to investors. There are a range of, uh, of methods that you can do, David. For example, uh, in Cross River Rail, and uh, this was mentioned in, uh, in Mr Shorten's speech uh, today, what we had was uh, $715 million was included in the budget from the federal government, $715 million from the state government. But there was to be an availability payment uh, made on that project on the basis of uh, the patronage on that line and therefore for an ability to mobilise private capital, particularly from superannuation funds. So one of the things that we've said is that within six months of government, uh, a independent advisory committee will advise on the practical ways in which this can be rolled out, but we know that there are models there, including that one, okay. where you can mobilise that superannuation funds, just like the F3 to M2, a small contribution from federal and state government has meant a tenfold investment as a result of that and the F3 to M2 now known as the North Connects that was just a good idea for decades is now under construction. A quick one finally um, amongst these priority projects I didn't see one of your favourites uh, one of your pet projects for many years high speed rail Anthony Albanese will that happen should Labor be elected? Well, I'll be uh, reintroducing the bill to establish a high-speed rail authority next Monday, David. There you go. Uh, into the Parliament, and I'll be very happy to come on the show next Monday and talk about it. Uh, there's no doubt, for example, there's another cost-benefit analysis that's been done. $2.15 benefit. Uh, for every dollar invested between Sydney and Melbourne and uh, a very viable project uh, that requires cooperation across state and territory governments and local government. It requires that project to be progressed and uh, that's why we support the establishing of the High Speed Rail Authority uh, which was uh, recommended by people like uh, Tim Fisher and Jennifer Westercott from the Business Council of Australia who are a part of the interim of advisory group that I established and that was abolished by the incoming government. Anthony Albanese, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Good to be with you, David. Well, for some government reaction now to what Labor's announced, the uh, newish Minister for Major Projects, Paul Fletcher, joins me in the studio. Thank you for your time this afternoon, Thanks, Minister. Thanks, Now, I note today you've basically dismissed Labor's ideas. I th thought Malcolm Turnbull was keeping everything on the table. This one's ruled out. Well, look, the first thing to note is that there's plenty of work going on under the Turnbull government in relation to our infrastructure package, some $50 billion. Uh, projects like the Bruce Highway and the Pacific Highway, Anthony Albanese mentioned both of those. They were mentioned by Labor today. They're being delivered. The, uh, there'll be a four-lane highway, Sydney to Brisbane, uh, by 2020, $5.6 billion going into that. There's $6.7 billion going into upgrade the Bruce Highway, that highway... Vital. What about some of those others like Melbourne Metro, Cross River Rail in, in uh, Brisbane? Um, what's happening with them? Well, let's come to one of the curiosities or the questions about what Labor has announced today. Because, yes, it's important to seek to encourage private sector investment in infrastructure. Wherever we can find projects to do that, that's a very good idea. Uh, Anthony Albanese talked about North Connects. That's a project in New South Wales which connects the M1 at Warunga to the M2 at Pennant Hills. Uh, about $3 billion of total expenditure, $810 million in total from the Commonwealth and the state governments together. The balance being paid by the Transurban Consortium and they will recover that out of tolls. So this is private sector involvement in an infrastructure there's, project? There's very extensive private sector involvement in this project and other projects. West Connects, which is another project where the Commonwealth is working together with the New South Wales Government. Uh, stage 1 and Stage 2, once completed, uh, will then be returned to private ownership.
very significant uh, realisation, a re retrieval of capital which can then be reinvested in other projects. But could you leverage more private sector involvement and beyond just uh, toll roads, which do seem to be the, the, the most likely option that private sector a invests in? And it's highly desirable to maximise the amount of private sector involvement in infrastructure. The challenge with public transport is that the fare revenue on a railway system typically doesn't even cover the operating expenses. So it does not generate a financial return to the investor. So Even on an airport link uh, like Sydney or Brisbane where you charge more than a regular train ride? You do charge more, but certainly if you look at the airport link in Sydney, that has been unfortunately a troubled project. As a general proposition, it is very challenging to generate a financial return on a public transport project. And so therefore for Labor to be talking about this $10 billion, which by the way is borrowed money, to be saying that this is a solution because there's a shortage of capital wanting to invest in projects with a return. There isn't a shortage of capital for, pro for wanting to invest in projects with a return. There's a shortage of projects with a return. And that's the key point here. Are you saying there's only a small number of projects that really stack up for the private sector? Uh, in general, uh, there are some infrastructure projects which generate a return, and it's a very good idea to get the private sector involved. We are very keen to do that. We Bad Badger is Creek Rail Link. Would that stack up for the commercial sector? Well, I think it's too early to say, and that comes to another point. It's very important that we have a proper assessment of projects, that we have a business case, that we have a cost-benefit analysis, and that we make a rational decision about which projects to fund. State governments have... And that's the job for infrastructure that is Australia? That's the job for infrastructure Australia. State governments have a finite amount of money available. The Commonwealth government has a finite amount of money available. Now, it's very unclear from what Labor's announced today, will Infrastructure Australia continue to be the body which makes which does the independent analysis and says to the Commonwealth Government, yes, this should be supported or not, or is the list of projects which was included in what Labor put out today, included in Bill Shorten's speech, is Labor now committed to those projects? And if they are, then in some cases they are committing to projects before a business case has been done. But do you take, do you take Anthony through, Albanese's point that and, a lot of these have been uh, already ticked off as priority well, no, projects? No, no. Right? In fact, I think that's, that really bears further analysis. He talked about Melbourne Metro. So yeah. this is a proposed rail project in Melbourne. Now, on my information, the business case has not been provided and won't be provided until early next year. So uh, the Commonwealth Government, the Turnbull Government, is certainly saying to state governments, if you have projects that you believe are deserving of federal government support, projects of national significance, they need to go through an Infrastructure Australia process and please give us a business case. Now, it's unclear from what Labor's saying whether, in terms of the projects they've listed, they're now saying they are committed to by Labor regardless of Infrastructure right. Australia analysis. Let me ask you what the government's going to do. You want to deliver more public transport, you want more federal government involvement in public transport, is that right? Uh, what Malcolm Turnbull as Prime Minister has said is that we will assess projects on their merits. So that means looking at the benefit cost ratio. In other words, for every one dollar of taxpayer money that goes in, does it produce a benefit of a dollar fifty or two dollars or three dollars? Or as is sometimes the case, does it only produce a benefit of thirty cents or seventy cents? But if it, if it passes that test, you do want to put federal money into public transport. What we want to do is rationally allocate Commonwealth money in accordance with a process where we identify the projects of highest value, projects that are of national significance. Bear in mind there is plenty of work for state governments to do here. State governments have traditionally taken the lead on public transport projects. So, but so at, I just want to be clear yeah, about this though. Is yeah. there a role for greater federal involvement in public transport projects? Uh, potentially there is. But, but how do you do that? But, but Where does but, that money come and, from? And I let me tie that back to the principle which Prime Minister Turnbull has articulated, that we don't have a bias in favour of road or rail. What we're interested in is which projects make most sense and we're also of course constrained by the Commonwealth budget. In other words, the constraint on mode has been relaxed but there's very much a constraint on the amount of money available. Now Labor's proposal is to go You'd out... You'd be borrowing money too. Labor's, propo you do, Labor's proposal well. is to go out and borrow additional borrowing money too. ten billion dollars. It's a, We're in deficit yeah. so you'd be borrowing. But too. we are in the process of, uh, as Treasurer Morrison 
has stated, we are in the process of seeking to get our budget back into surplus over time. So it is very important that as we look at what we do in this space, we are conscious of the fiscal constraints. And can I make the point that $50 billion uh, plan that we have has an enormous amount going on. Pacific Highway, Bruce Highway. Sure, but just back on the, public transport, the, it sounds uh, from what you're saying like we're not going to, you're not going to be able to leverage private sector money for any public transport either. If it uh, doesn't stack up, it doesn't stack uh, up. What I'm, the point I'm making is that the premise that there is some new way to get private sector investment into projects that don't generate a financial return is not a valid premise. Does it make sense to maximise opportunities to get private sector investment in infrastructure? Of course it does. We are already doing that. Let me give you an example of some of the financial innovation that is occurring now. There is a $2 billion concessional loan from the Commonwealth Government to the New South Wales Government for West Connects. Now that is important to allow the stage two to be brought forward as quickly as possible and in turn for the combined two stages to to then uh, be sold to realise capital to reinvest. So but, that's very important. Right. But it does but sound I, but that's partly what Labor's talking about, concessional loans. Well, the point, I, the, the, the point I'm making is there's nothing particularly new here. This is being dressed up by Labor as some bold breakthrough on infrastructure. Look, we welcome creative thinking, but they don't have an answer to the fundamental problem. How are you going to get private sector investment into projects that don't generate a financial return? And uh, nor do they have an answer to, to the fact that you know we are doing this stuff, we're delivering this stuff, the projects that Albanese is talking about, many of them, we already have well underway. Can I make this point as well? When we saw the chaos from the previous Labor government with pink bats, with school halls, with their mismanagement of the NBN, a huge infrastructure project which they failed to take to a cost-benefit analysis with Infrastructure Australia, does anybody really believe that Labor is capable of delivering on a plan in this space? Paul Fletcher, we will have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. We're going to turn now to the situation in Syria, where, as we've been reporting, Russia has really ramped up its campaign. It's lobbed in some 26 cruise missiles. That's on top of its air campaign and a ground campaign coordinated with the Assad regime. And it seems Hezbollah and Iran. Joining us now is John Blaxland from...